Hey guys! Today I'm excited to work with you on setting up a typed global store using Vue's built-in reactivity API. I've seen a lot of talk about this in various articles and videos, but I wanted to see if I could create something both typed and easily reusable. We'll go over how to create a store that you can easily inject into your project with a Vue plugin or with the provide inject pattern. You'll then be able to easily access and update global state in your applications. To get started, let's demonstrate the fully working project. I'm here at my local host 3000 and the first thing I want to do is reload and you'll notice a little loading indicator pops up here as this list of restaurants loads. And so we'll be creating this list of restaurants, which is basically a to-do list, but has a rating with it. We can also add restaurants. Let's maybe add something boring like uh, Denny's, two stars, and uh, it has pancakes. So good enough, you know, two stars and it's open 24 hours. And you can see it created, and you might not have noticed, but these are created in alphabetical order. I can also change this, maybe upgrade the rating and say new pancake chef. And then that's edited. You saw the loading indicator pop here, I hope. And that's updated. We can also delete. And that's the basic gist of the app. And we'll learn how to create a store that keeps a list or an array of all these restaurants and has methods for us to update, add, or delete these restaurants. Now, before we get too far into this, I want to be pretty open. I consider this to be more of an intermediate or advanced tutorial. I've created some soft, as I highlighted here in asterisks, asterisks, anyway, I've created some soft prerequisites of things that will help you pick up and understand this content or the content of this tutorial more easily. First of all, Vue 3 with the composition API. If you're not quite familiar with it, if you're familiar with using React hooks, it's very similar to that. In Vue 3, we can create something called a setup method and create reactive properties using this React or Ref type. And you might think of this similar to React use state, except that we have to set the state in a different way, which we'll see. Also in Vue, we kind of have this mutable state instead of trying to use immutable types or objects. So that's a little different, but otherwise I think it should make sense to you. We're also going to use a TypeScript to create a library or create this Vue DFS store. And we'll also be working with an API that uses asynchronous methods for the CRUD operations of our restaurants. For our dev tool, instead of using the Vue CLI, we'll be using Vite, which is a dev and build tool using native ES modules, and it uses Rollup to build the application. And we'll also be using Tailwind CSS. I'll tell you from the start that we're not going to be covering a lot of the markup. I've pre-built the components. I want to focus on the application logic of fetching restaurants, storing them, deleting them, and tracking a loading state. I'm now here at my repository called Vue DFS Store, which stands for a dead bleepin' simple store. Far be it for me to curse on YouTube, or in general. I'm a very proper person. We, uh, we have some instructions on how to install this, and this is the reusable store that we'll go over. We'll actually go deeply into the source code, which may be tricky, but it's written in ty TypeScript, and I hope it will help you to create your own reusable stores with an API that you like. Also on my GitHub account, if I go here, I have a DFS tutorial template. So if you just go to my name, Jacob SN Goodwin and DFS tutorial, you can find a starter branch for the code, click use template, and then this will sort of fork the repository with the starter code into your GitHub account. Or you can feel free to just clone it directly. You can click here and get the SSH or HTTP three T's. Wow. HTTPS address or URL to clone this repo for yourself. Okie doke. I'm here in the repository now and you can see that this is a project called DFS tutorial live, meaning I'm going to be doing this live and I'm in the starter branch. I'm just going to create a checkout and create a branch called master. And that's good. We're working on a master branch and I want to install all of the packages to get started. Actually, just npm install, of course. 
And that's how you can get started with this project as well. Let's go ahead and look at some of the package.json now to see what we have here. While that's installing, of course. We have some scripts to run the application. To run the client or the view application, you can just use npm run dev. To run the JSON web server, which is kind of a fake database that stores entries in a file, which is this db.json file, we're going to create this server script, which runs JSON server in watch mode. It will save the database in this db.json file. I create a 300 millisecond delay for fetching requests. I don't know if this works with update requests. And then I run this on port 8000. So this little delay is just so that we can see some UI loaders in our store. Again, this db.json should be initially populated with four restaurants. You see we have a restaurant key with an array and we have those restaurants that you might have seen in the initial demo with ID, name, rating, and review. We have an, a start script which will run both this dev and server script. It's kind of a one-stop <laughs> script to get the thing running with the database. We're not going to be building this application, but using Vite build will run the rollup and that will build your application. As with most view applications in the source folder, we usually have a main.js or TypeScript file. And since I'm using TypeScript, it's main.ts. In view three, we use this create app import that's destructured from Vue, and we use that with the root component app, which is here. And then we mount it on a div with ID app, and that is in a root level index.html file. And one thing that may be important to note is that I can just source or reference the main.ts file directly in the HTML. I don't need to pre-compile it and then import a JavaScript file. This will be handled by Vite. I also have configured prettier. You can change this to update your tab width. I like the trailing commas when I create an object with keys on multiple lines. You may not. You may prefer single quotes and no semicolons. Change it to your will. We also have ESLint. ESLint will be using something called the view ESLint parser. And then inside of the options, we're going to set the TypeScript ESLint parser. And this is just the instructions of the view ESLint parser to get Vue to work with TypeScript. I've also added many of the recommended plugins for using Vue with Prettier and with TypeScript here. This little rule is just so that I can use an underscore if I don't want to use a parameter in a method or function. Now, I do want to mention that Vite also has this library called Create Vite App under the Vite.js repository with some templates to get started. And one of them is Vue.ts, which you can run. And this will scaffold out an application with TypeScript support. And what it will do if we return to our application is it will be able to handle TypeScript inside of the template. So for example, if you're calling a method, it would give you all the typing. I have it, but I'll explain why and also handle all the linting and things for you. So it is a little tricky to set up the config. That Vue.ts template of the Create Vite app does appear to be experimental. I haven't tried it. Go ahead and give it a go. It may work just great for you. Now, ESLint does work with some linting rules, but it won't handle things like types. For example, this loading here, which is stored in a ref, which is a way of wrapping a normal TypeScript or JavaScript type in a reactive object and we set these reactive objects with the value. If we set this to example a string, this loading.value, I get a warning here, but you can see it says the string is not assignable to type boolean and that is coming from vtr which is a VS code extension. So the actual TypeScript typing warnings are coming from a plugin. You can't get those out of the box with my configuration, but maybe that Vue.ts, and actually that's what it's supposed to do, will handle this out of the box without a Vter plugin. But most people are using this Vter, as far as I know, to handle this typing. I'll set this back to true and let's continue. I also wanna mention that we have a Tailwind config, which really doesn't have anything in it. It just has a purge setup for if we were to build the application but this gets us to use Tailwind. We have to have this config file. And then we have post CSS, which will allow us to use Tailwind. 
Furthermore, we have our TypeScript config, which you can take a look at, but I do not want to go into in great detail. Having gone over all of our configuration, let's now go ahead and try to run this application with npm run, make sure I'm in the terminal, npm run start. Let's open up localhost 3000. We should see a loading indicator. Sometimes the first load of the application can take a little while. So let's see, and it loaded here and our restaurants have loaded. Now, if I open up the developer tools here, and let's just go to the console for now. If I click this restaurant, it'll open the edit window. And if I try to edit right now and maybe change the rating, it won't actually update the database, but you'll see that it emits an event. And right now we are just logging this event. We can also do similar thing. If I click an X here, you see I deleted a restaurant and it would happen if I added a restaurant and there's no validation in this. That's beyond the scope of this app. But if we create a restaurant, we see the payload and let's go into the app or into a diagram to see what's actually going on here. At the root of our project, we have the main app component, which we've already seen. This app is currently fetching the restaurants from our API. It renders a list of the restaurants. So that list of those little purple cards are a separate component. It can also open up a menu to edit a restaurant to create a new restaurant. So I created a single form component, that modal that pops up for both adding a new restaurant and for updating a restaurant. So when we want to update a restaurant, the modal will update from a restaurant list or open from the restaurant list. And if we want to create a new one, that modal is open from the app component. The app component also handles showing the loader states. I didn't put any loaders in the form or in these components. I just put a single loader in the app. Our restaurant list renders the cards and it orders them alphabetically. It also handles the updating and deleting restaurants. Now, these events for updating and deleting the restaurant occur in the edit restaurant. So when we want to update, we click that button, which fires a submit event. And this restaurant list handles the submit event by calling an update method inside of its setup function. The delete method will get called, however, when this restaurant card gets the delete button clicked. So when someone clicks an X in the corner of the card, that fires the delete event and a method delete is called inside of restaurant list. So you can see how we could end up creating a global store and then accessing methods in this restaurant list and also fetching all of the restaurants in the main app. So it will be nice. Maybe this isn't the best architecture ever, but it will be a nice example to show how we can access a global store in the app and in the restaurant list components. I'm back in the app.view component, uh, and this is the main one here, which renders a restaurant list that I mentioned. The restaurant list receives a value is bound to sorted restaurants, I should say. So we pass actually the sorted restaurants into the restaurant prop of restaurant list. Scrolling down, right now most of our logic is in this app.view, and I kind of showed this in the diagram, but let's take a look. We have a local piece of state called show modal, and this is all handled with the view three composition API. So we do this in the setup method. We also store an array of restaurants, and this is a data type that I store in the data layer folder, which we'll look at shortly. We have a local loading reference, which is to handle that little loader icon we saw and a potential error. We then use the on mounted hook for when the component mounts to set the error to undefined, which is how we clear our error. And then we set the loading dot value to true. We're then going to reach out to a get restaurants async method. And these are all provided in this little data layer here. Let's go ahead and maybe quickly take a look at that. In this data layer, I said we have the definition of a restaurant and that just has an ID, name, rating, and review. The ID is optional because when we create restaurants, we will let JSON server populate the ID for us. And when we fetch restaurants, it will be populated by JSON web server. And in here, we just have a bunch of methods that are creating either post or get or put methods or even delete when we delete them. And then this is kind of a wrapper for the fetch API. Back in app.view, 
The only thing that is a little weird is instead of using try catch, I'm handling all of the try catch for errors inside of index.ts. And then I'm going to use an algebraic data type called either. And you don't need to go into details. You can go ahead and look at this code a little more later. But what this is doing is in this variable, we can call a method either. And this forces us to handle the case when there's an error or a successful fetching of restaurants. So we have the first callback is what do we do if we get an error and it receives the error. And in this case, we're going to set our local error states value. And that's when we use refs. You see, this is a ref of type error. When we do that, we set the value of this error to that fetched error. If we get the restaurant successfully or we fetch them, we have a list of restaurants. And then we set this restaurants.value array to the fetched restaurants. And in either case, no matter what happens, we'll set loading to false after we either get an error or the restaurants. We have a method to show the modal for when we click on and add restaurant. And we also have a method right now for creating a restaurant inside of that modal that will get called in this app component. And right now it just console logs and then unshows the modal, sets show modal to false. We're also using a computed property. So that's great. One more thing to learn and demonstrate. And this is just sorting the actual restaurants. Now to make these different functions and variables or, you know, these ref types, and there's also another one called reactive, which we'll see shortly to make these renderable in the component, we return them in an object. So for example, we have this loading state and the show modal property. And if we scroll up, you can see that we, uh, well, this isn't show modal. Where do I do it? Aha. The active property of this modal, which determines if it's displayed is bound to show modal variable, which we return in the setup function. And then the loader, as you can see here, its visibility is determined as visible if this loading is true. So we have a little ternary statement here inside of a style. Our goal for today is going to be to take this local state of loading restaurants and handle it via a store to sort of separate our application logic from the components as much as we can. Here is the documentation for my library called View DFS Store, which I encourage you to check out on GitHub. I recorded this part of the tutorial earlier and I really didn't like how I did it because I kind of just went straight into the documentation and was pointing out all these types. And to be quite frankly, I was confusing myself and I'm sure that would mean you would be confused. But I wanna show you the documentation or actually I wanna show you it briefly and then we're going to actually use it in our application. And as I create the store, then we'll go into the source code and try to better understand what is actually happening. To create a store, we need to create types and these can actually be inferred, but I like to explicitly define them. So if you were to create a counter, you could create a piece of state called or a type called counter state that just holds a single count property. And you could create a type called counter accessors. Now accessors are functions that we can use to either change our counter state here or to get some derived value. And I'll show you what we mean shortly but we just define the method signatures here. And so we're gonna have an increment count, which can receive a field. So we can increment a value by a multiple, by one or two or three, et cetera, by some integer. We also have a method called clear count to reset it to zero. And we have a molt count, and this is gonna, you're gonna see this is sort of a derived value, which will take a value and return a number. And by the name, you can tell that this is gonna multiply the count by val. So to create a store, we use the create store method of view DFS store. This takes in four pro properties. All of them are required except for this mutator hook. You can give it a name. And I think I don't like this. This is not actually required for the functionality of this app. So I'll probably remove that from the API down the road. You provide an initial state, which has the shape of counter state. You can see that I pass counter state and counter accessors to the generic brackets there. And so this will enforce our initial state to have the shape of counter state. Then we use something called an accessors creator, 
which is a function which receives a mutate and a get method. We then return and notice this is not, this is actually a regular parentheses and inside of it is an object. So we're actually returning this object and these, this object will get access to the mutate and get functions from the outer access creator here. And we'll see this more in detail when we implement ours. But in the increment count case, we're going to get a value number and then we can mutate our state. So this is how we access our state is we get the state inside of the mutate function. And then we can update the state's count by some value. We can also clear the count by setting state.count to zero and get allows us to get a read-only version of the state. Inside of mutate, we get access to a mutable, normal, reactive version of the state, but our get will only receive a read-only version. And the state in general that we'll have access to is also read-only. But what we can do here is get a derived value of the state. So we get the state, it returns the state, we access the count, and we multiply it by the value here. This mutator hook is a function that will get called and has access to the state and it gets called every time you run a mutate method or function here. And we could have multiple mutations inside of each of these accessor methods. So to review the gist of this, we create a state and then we create accessors, which are how we get or modify the state via methods. Let's now go ahead and create our store. So let's go to source and we'll create a folder called store, which is common for people that are creating stores. Maybe you would call it the application layer or something else. And we'll create a restaurant store.ts. The first thing I want to do is define our actual state. And we do that, as you recall, by creating a type. And we'll call this restaurant state, restaurant. I really pronounce that very well there. And to this state, I'm just going to copy the state. Okie doke. So the first thing I'm going to do is import this whole data folder and then namespace it sort of, I don't know if that's the right term, but call it API just so that we can sort of namespace all our fields and methods from there, as opposed to our methods in our store. So some of our methods will have the same names. So I just want to distinguish, distinguish when they're coming from the API or data layer. This state will have the array of restaurants. It can have a possible error, which can possibly be undefined. It will have a loading, updating, or deleting states. And these are all used for just displaying that little flashing loader. We could probably simplify this to a single loader. Nevertheless, I want to separate them out. Next, I want to define all of the accessors for this store. Now, usually I might go doing this one by one or step by step. But let's just go ahead and add them all and I'll, I'll comment out the ones we don't need and then we can go adding them one by one as we actually add the implementation of the logic. We will have a create method, we'll have a delete and get and then also a sorted and update methods. And the sorted one will just be a nice way to get a sorted list of restaurants. As you can see, we're already sorting them in the application or as you might remember, you can't see it now. I'm now going to comment out all of these except for the initial get method. This is the first one we'll implement. And so I just don't want errors from all of these unimplemented methods, which is the benefit of TypeScript. Now to create the actual store, we can assign it to a variable that we're going to export and we'll call this restaurant store. And to initialize a store, we need to import the create store function from view, F, view DFS store. So we'll import create store from view DFS store. Now here's a problem. I've yet to install that. So let's us uh, quit our process here and npm install view DFS store. Now this needs to be an application dependency and not a dev dependency for reasons that are hopefully clear. As I said, this is an intermediate tutorial. Good, and hopefully if I save this, it's found now. Great. Let's create our store with create store. And in the angle brackets, we can provide, and this will help us with our typing, the restaurant state for the first argument and our restaurant accessors. I don't know which one, there it is. 
as the type of accessor. And to this function, we provide an object inside braces. So first, if we hit you know, our auto completion, control or command space, we get the properties we need and the mutator hook's optional. Let's add the name first. We'll call this restaurant store. And then we'll create an initial state and I'm just gonna copy and paste this. So our initial state will be an empty array of restaurants. You might've seen me quickly delete some stuff on restaurants and air. Our types are actually defined up here. So we know that this array is an array of api.restaurant. And I had earlier done something like as api.restaurant, but I ended up, that would be helpful if you wanted to not include the state and accessors here and you wanted type inference, but I really think you should define your types above the create store. Personal preference, but I think it's useful. Okay, there is our state, and then we need an accessors creator. All right, so we get this method that, remember, gets access to mutate and get, and then we can return an object with a list of the methods. Now, we first need to define this get method. So let's do that now. In order to do this, I'm actually going to define the accessors creator up above our restaurant store, and then I'm going to provide this to the accessors creator here. So let's cut this. And actually, we may not cut it, but let's go ahead and create that accessors creator. So this will be accessors creator, and it will be a function which gets a mutate. And now I'm going to pull off some types from the ViewDFS store. And this is called a mutator is the first one. And I will import that. Let's make sure that imported correctly. And so this mutator is a mutator of a restaurant state. And then I'm going to add a getter. And I probably should call this, well, I guess this one's called mutate, but you'll see the problem here. I called this a get state. Now, really to be consistent, I should change the API and call this like a getter but hopefully this isn't too much for you and you're not so angry that you can follow the rest of the tutorial. So we'll have a get state of a restaurant state here. And I think this needs to be imported. There we go. And I auto imported that. And this will return restaurant accessors. It will return this type here. And the last thing I need to do here is actually define the where well, this is the actual implementation. So this is the object that we're going to return. So this object needs to have a get method, first of all. And here we're going to pass this accessors creator, and let's add a space there, as the property of this. And of course, we can use the short syntax here with the accessors creator, and we don't have to write colon accessors creator. Great, so we can see that this is missing get because we define get in this type. Thank you, TypeScript. I'm now going to just copy and paste the get code. It's a little lengthy and try to explain what's going on here. We add it as a get key, and then we define it as an async method. And I'll use an arrow function. And so this is kind of how you'll define your methods. And let's add the code. So right now this getter is not being used. Let's see if there are any other problems. Ah, this is not being used, but we'll fix that shortly. So here's our first get method and here's what it will do. It will use this mutate function that it gets access to. This mutate function gets access to the mutable state. So this is not read only, this is a normal reactive view object. So we can mutate its loading property, set it to true and clear the error. We then reach out to our restaurants API and call get restaurants. And then we handle the case of an error. If there's an error, we'll set the state. And remember, we can only set the state inside of mutate method. Any other access to the state is read only and protected. Maybe I'm not using protected properly there, but it is read only. And then if we get fetched restaurants, we'll mutate the state to set the restaurants to fetched restaurants. And in any case, we're going to set state.loading to false. So that's pretty simple there. And the most important thing we need to do now is export default, or you could give it as a named export, but we'll call restaurant store. And that should get rid of one of the warnings and 
There we go. The only warning is that we're not using the getter, but we'll use it later. Let's check our terminal and we'll need to run this app again. And it built it again. It took a little longer because it had to build it with my new DFS store library. Let's now see what is going on when we call create store and provide it initial state. So let's go to the view DFS store library. So here it is. Now you remember that we passed in a config to a create store function. It has a state object and accessors. And I have a bunch of types defined up here, which you can go into more detail later. But basically our state needs to be an object, which, which is what a record is in TypeScript. It just means that it's an object that has a key that's either a string, number, or symbol. So you're not technically limited to just objects with string keys. Accessors are records of string keys to accessor functions, which are just functions that basically can be anything. And those are used to access the state. So we pass this config, which is of this type create store config, has name, initial state, accessors, creator, and a mutator hook. And it takes the config's initial state, which is the value we passed in for the restaurants, the loading, and the error, etc and we wrap it in a view reactive object. This means that our components can update and re-render when properties of this reactive object change. However, to make our API more secure, we would like to only access the state in a read-only fashion. So we take this reactive state and we wrap it in read-only to also get a read-only state. Now, why separate these two out? That is because our reactive state needs to be provided to our mutators. Remember, when we mutate state, we need the actual normal reactive state that we can modify. I then access the accessors creator property off of the config, and this is where things maybe get a little bit tricky. I define a mutate function here and a get. Now, since this is a little tricky, let's go back to the other repository and let's look at our accessors creator that we pass to our config here. This accessors creator, remember, gets access to a mutate, which mutates the restaurant state, and a getter, or a get, which gets the restaurant state. And when we, we can then call this mutate function, but notice the mutate also takes a function inside. So this is a little bit confusing, I understand, but we can call this mutate function and we can call it multiple times. We call it here, we call it here, here, and here. And so this is what we're setting up if we go back inside of this view DFS store. So we create a mutate function that will receive the mutator func. And this mutator func is what we pass into mutate. So we define this whole thing every time we want to make a mutation. And what happens is when we call mutate, the inner function will get executed. So we pass it this function. It's a little confusing, right? But it gets executed with the reactive state. And this is what allows us to actually change the state. And so this is getting invoked for us. Then you might recall we had this mutator hook that gets called. And let's go back. We don't actually have it, but maybe let's add one here. We would do that in our config, which is down here. We could say mutator hook. And this receives the state. And we could maybe console.log the state. So basically now every time that we call the mutate function, this state will get, this mutator hook will get called with the state. And if we go back, that's what's happening here. We need to make sure that it actually exists because this property is optional. We'll look at this get later, but this is basically just a method that gives us access to the read-only state, which we wrapped the initial object in here. We then create the accessors with the mutate and the get, and then we return this in something called the store API. So this is the main thing that we'll be working with, a portion of read-only state, and this is what our templates in view and our components can render data based off of, and our accessors, which can allow us to modify the state or get some derived state. And so I call this store API because that's what we work with. We then 
use this store key here and symbol. And this is used for us to create something called a provider. And a provider allows us to provide this store or make it accessible from some point in our view component tree. And so when we say provider here, const provider, and it returns a provide of store key, and it provides the store API, this allows us to access this object in any different level of our component tree. However, we can also provide it at the app level using an install method. And this install method allows us to, in the main.ts file, use an app.use statement, or actually I think this would be a create store.use statement now in view. I have to check that, maybe it's called an app, to instantiate the store at the root of our application, which is how we'll use it. However, we also create this provider to use lower down in our tree. Say we don't want to inject our store at the top of our application, because maybe you don't want people to have access at every layer. And that could be useful. We'll only use this install here. And this is how you use view plugins. We then create a store with the name, the store API, this very important, this install method or function, a store key for kind of advanced use, and this provider. And that is what is returned by create store. And what we'll do shortly then is take this use store, which takes a store, the return value from create store, and that will give us access to this store API. So in our actual components, we'll say use store, we'll pass it the exported store that's returned from create store. And then this calls an inject function, which accesses the stores.key, which is kind of a unique identifier of the store. And then it basically gives us access to this store API, which you remember has the state and the accessors. And then we do a quick check to make sure that the store API exists. So if you haven't called this provide either here or with this provider, if you haven't called that yet, this store API will not actually exist. It won't be injected into the application. So then we're just going to throw an error saying that the store.name has yet to be initialized and then return the store API. So our main way of accessing the store is from the create store and use store. Now, why, why all this complexity? It's not actually that complex. It's only 135 lines with all this spacing. That's not bad. It's basically to have a consistent way of accessing using these accessors of accessing the state. We could, you know, just create without a create store method, what you'll see in some of the tutorials that I've looked at is they might just create a file and then create some reactive object and they'll just export this object directly or provide it directly with a provider and then inject it in different levels of their application. But I create this method that sort of wraps it all and returns a store and then has a convenient method called use store to make use of this in various components. Now that's a lot of theory. <laughs> this video is getting long. So let's actually, we, now that we've created our store, let's actually make use of this install method and get this store working in our application. I'm back in the main project. Let's go to index.ts. Actually, this is not the right, <laughs> we want to go to main.ts, sorry. And let's now import our store. So we're in main here and we need to go into store and we'll say it's the default export. So we'll call this a rest hour on store from, and let's go here. We should have store restaurant. And remember, this is the full object there called a store. And this has an install method on it in the object that's returned. So we can just say dot use restaurant store and save. So now we can access our restaurant store using the use store method anywhere in our application beneath this main.ts. So really anywhere in our application. Remember that we've already defined a method to get the restaurants from our API. So we can actually go into app.view here and update much of this application logic to use our state now. So we can actually get rid of all of this. We do need the show modal because that's sort of local state but we can get rid of this. And then in our imports, actually, let's make sure that we import the store, import restaurant store from go up one store restaurant. 
And then we need to import from the view DFS store library, the use store function or method. I guess everything's kind of a method in JavaScript, but we're not going into prototypal inheritance here. All right. So that's good. We are going to get some errors, which we should. Let's now access our state of this restaurant store and this single accessor method as follows. So we can strip off the state and the accessors by using the use store and passing the restaurant store. And so this state, as you can see, has the read only and it's actually deep read only, as you can see here, it has the restaurants, it has the error, the loading, the updating, and we have all these types. Now it's a little hard to read, but I still think it's nice for auto completion. And then we have the accessors. So this object that has state and accessors was called the store API. Now in on mounted, this logic is actually handled in our accessor get method now where we set the loading and the error, etc. So let's go ahead and clear all this. And now we can just say accessors dot get. Bada boom, that's it. The show modal handles local state, so we can kind of leave that the same. We won't update create restaurant yet. Now I do need to add a little temporary fix to the sorted restaurants and we'll do it like so. So on the state object, we have the restaurants. I'm just going to spread that to get a new array because of this read only nature of our state dot restaurants. Remember it's read only here restaurants. It doesn't have a sort method. So to make a copy of the restaurants, I will then spread it and then sort it that way. Lastly, we no longer have a loading property to return but we do have our entire state. So let's just return the state and that should make the error go away. And then we should have errors in our template. So we need to go up here to our loading indicator. And now our, we're going to access this from state and what properties do we have? We have deleting error loading, and we're going to use loading. And lastly, we're not using get restaurants here. And what is this from? Ah, that's an unused import actually. Well, that's good. And again, we're actually using in the template, we're using sorted restaurants. We're not using the state dot restaurants directly. So by using this property here, our sorted restaurants are already what's being passed as a property to the restaurant list. So let's save that. And looks like our hot module reloading is good. So let's go back to our browser and see if we can reload this baby. So let's maybe hit refresh. So let's load the application. I've just refreshed localhost 3000 and it's loading and we have this proxy of restaurants. And this uh, is from the mutation hook actually. If you remember in the store, we added a hook that prints the state. And so we started with an array of nothing and the loading true. And then we added the restaurants and then you can see in the next step we set loading false. So we kind of have a diff of the states here in console log. And now the proxy is just the view wrapper of the plain old object. And so this is how it handles the reactivity. You could actually get rid of this by using a two raw function, which you can find if you go to the view three basic reactivity page. All right, this video is getting long, but I think we have the whole store set up. So now we just need to add some new methods for the other CRUD operations. But the first thing I want to do is move this sort of functionality to the store. Remember I said we can mutate the state, but we can also get derive state. So inside of restaurants, we're going to add this sorted method that actually returns the raw restaurants. It doesn't return some reactive version. It just returns the array of restaurants. So now you see our accessors is missing this type. And so let's add a sorted. This sorted will be a function which is going to return. Basically, it's going to return what we had in the template, except that we're going to use this get that's provided to our accessors, which gets the read only state. And you can see all of the read only, deep read only there that's provided by view. And then we access the restaurants property. And again, because it's read only, we cannot use the sort because that requires mutating, but we spread it and then we sort it. If, if someone knows a better way to do this without spreading, by all means, let me know. So there's our sorted property. 
I needed a trailing comma. And let's go to app.view. And we basically moved this logic out. So now we can say accessors dot, and let's have uh, sorted. Call that function. And it's just, this is prettier. Just to add it on one line, we actually return the value of that sorted. So now let's go to our app and let's make sure if we refresh this that everything is still sorted. A, B, G, N looks good. And it might be helpful to check the IDs here. If I edit this, this so this was ID 1. So I, if they were not sorted, ID 1 would come first. So I think that is working. Let's now add functionality to create a restaurant. Let's go back to the restaurant store. I already had a function definition or shape of the function for creating a restaurant. It's a function that receives a restaurant and just returns a void promise. Void promises is what my friends say about me. <laughs> Let's go ahead and create this here. So this create is going to be an async method because it returns a promise and it takes a restaurant which is of type api.restaurant. And it's going to then mutate the state in all necessary ways here. So let's just copy and paste that. It's very similar to get. And in fact, all of this is the same. It's kind of just doing CRUD operations. So here's our create. And let's, something's wrong with how I did this here. A sync, there we go, I misspelled. Good. And now let's add the logic. And I accidentally added two there. And I think that is good. And this is a restaurant. All right. So in here, we're going to set updating to true. So we're going to use a separate Boolean for creating and updating versus fetching or deleting. You might just use a single state property here. We'll reach out to create restaurant. If we get the restaurant, we'll mutate the state with this new restaurant or actually by pushing the restaurant onto it. And then if there's an error, we'll make sure to apply this to our state as well. And as always at the end, we'll set the updating variable to false. Let's go and apply this in our app.view. Now in our app.view, we already have a handler for when a create restaurant happens. So when we, in the application, when we click the add restaurant button, maybe let's go to the application. It pulls up a modal and then we create a restaurant we give it a rating and a review, and then when we create, this will fire an event, and this event gets handled by our main app.view. So I just wanted to cover that because it had been a while, and you can see these get handled here. Our edit restaurant component has a submit event, which calls create restaurant, and create restaurant is here. And so all we need to do now is reach out to our accessors and call the create method. I don't know why I scrolled over that multiple times and pass it the new restaurant. And we can actually await that if we want. And really that should be all. So let's see if we can create a restaurant. No warnings here. Let's go back to the app. So let's go ahead and add uh, something very boring. Mike's tacos. Not as good as Gabriel's. I, I really pulled out my accent there, Gabriel. And we get Mike's Tacos. And we still can't edit it though. Let's go ahead and say Mike's Tacos Extra Awesome. And I can't get my caps right, but let's try to edit. And you can see this is just printing a statement, but it doesn't actually update. And delete still does nothing. So let's go ahead and add those two. But before I get ahead of myself, remember we have this loader and right now we have multiple loading properties. So let's just add that we show this loader if it's either state.loading or state.updating. And we'll add one for deleting later. And I don't know how to use an or statement. There we go. Let's go back to restaurant.ts and let's uncomment the, let's do update, sure. And now we need to add this method. So update is the last one alphabetically. I'm being really proper here. And here it goes. So update is very similar to create. It receives a restaurant. We set the updating property to true. 
and this is the same as create. Create and update both use updating. And then we reach out to our API's update restaurant endpoint, which returns an either. And I wrap the either in something called response or error. So if we get the error, we'll add that to our state. And if we get the updated restaurant, I'm going to mutate the state by finding the index that has the same index as this updated restaurant. So that here is we say r.id, and that r is from the find by index method. And we want to see, find the one that equals the updated restaurant's ID. And then we want to update that restaurant with updated restaurant. Now in real world applications, a lot of people are using stale while revalidate type stuff, SWR, especially in the React world. And maybe you can find something like that, but I'm just going to optimistically update our state here. And for those of you who don't know what I meant by that, uh, you try to <laughs> cast it out of your mind, I guess. <laughs> it's actually very helpful. So here's the mutate where we set state.updating to false. Now, this is different. We don't handle the updating in our app.view. We handle it in a child component, which is in components, which is the restaurant list. Now, when we edit restaurants, we use the same edit restaurant component inside of a modal. But when we call submit from this edit restaurant, edit restaurant inside of restaurant list, we call update restaurant. And of course, I set this all up for you. you. You may find it valuable to go through and look at this. It's basic single page application stuff, but we call this update restaurant method inside of setup. We're using the composition API. And so we can just call, actually, we need to import it into this component. So we need to import as before the use store from view DFS store, not form from good. And then we need to import the actual restaurant store again, which is a default export up store restaurant. Zagut. My German is terrible. I'm sorry for all the Germans I've offended. In fact, my German is non-existent, some might say. Okay, let's now get the accessors. Remember, we return the store API, which has state and accessors from use store, and the store is the restaurant store. Excellent. Now, we don't actually need to access the state here because we're only going to update it. When we update the state, our app.view will then get the restaurants because it's accessing the restaurant state. So in app.view, we get the state here. This state has the restaurants, remember, and those are accessed by accessors.sorted. So our restaurants are actually received in app.view and passed to the restaurant list. So here we're only calling methods to update the state and we don't actually need the state as it's passed. We don't need the state object as it is passed down from the parent. So let's call accessors dot what I call it update yes and then oops wrong method I don't want to do this in show modal in update restaurant here get rid of the console log and call update and we'll say restaurant not restaurant store the actual restaurant and you could await this if you need to but actually you don't need to really await this because the state is being updated reactively. So I think it's okay to just leave it like this. Even though this is an async function, when those properties change, they'll change the reactive state and things will re-render. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Let's go back to our app and let's see if we can change Mike's tacos. Uh, let's change it to Papa's tacos. Ooh, Papa's tacos are so good. Five stars. Papa si sabe hacer tacos. I don't know, I, I didn't learn how to type, type for a while. Let's see if we can edit. And, oh, the alphabetical order changed. This is great. It's all working as expected. And papa, I need to add my, uh, I need to change my keyboard to Spanish. Papa, si sabe hacer tacos. Pues, say pues a lot, you know, make me sound less like a gringo. <laughs> oh, anyway, my channel's called Jacobo Code because I used to live in Latin America. I speak a little Spanish, but, you know, I, I lose it every day. But yeah, I, I'm puro gringo, very, very gringo, but I like Spanish. 
Let's go back to restaurant store and let's add the last method here, last method, which is delete. And then let's add the signature below. So create, we'll add it after create, between create and get. And this will do the same thing. We'll set it, except we'll add a deleting state instead of update or loading. We check the error, we delete the restaurant, we handle an error. And if we do delete it, we're going to do similar to the update. We're going to optimistically remove the deleted item from our states. Now, you know, you always have to make sure you have your cache and your local data matching the remote data, but we're not worrying about that as I repeat myself. And we'll set state.deleting to false. So there's two things we need to do. Inside app.view, remember we have this loader. So I'm gonna say also if it's state.deleting, and we'll save that, okay. And then in restaurant list, where this method handles, we're just going to uh, call accessors. We've already imported it, dot delete, and forward the ID. And ladies and gents, let's cross our fingers. That could actually be it. You've only been in this uh, tutorial for far longer than you'd hoped. Let's try deleting Papa's Tacos. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We're still seeing our state updating here. Uh, this this barbecue place is kind of fun. The guy's like, what do you smell here? Love. And it's like, yeah, I smell love here. Like, Give me some barbecue. All right. Friggin' delish. All right, let's see that edits. And stuff seems to be working. Let's try a hard reload. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've got this working. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm probably just going to end abruptly here. This recording is saying 50 minutes, and I recorded the first part of 15. Let's hope I can cut it to 45, but I'll put some chapters in there. And I hope you've learned, even if the, the Vue DFS store was a little confusing, I hope you've learned how you could create your own API with a reusable store. I'm yelling into the mic. I don't know why I do that. It's right in front of my face. I just get excited and my voice is hoarse, but I hope you've stuck around and that you found this a little more advanced and useful than other tutorials. Maybe it's less useful and less people will see it because it's a little bit niche and advanced, but it's something I would have liked to see. Take care. Hasta luego. Ciao.